we're going to be talking about a, uh, a new product labeling campaign that Hiroshi is running uh, for a product grouping called Function Max Products. Um, let me, there we go. So, uh, of course, you're going to ask, what is a Function Max uh, connector? Uh, basically, it's a board to board connector. Um, Rossi makes a number of board to board connectors, quite a few. Uh, but what makes a connector part of part of the Function Max family uh, is that it has one of two features, or possibly has both of the features. One is it has a floating contact system to absorb misalignment when connecting the uh, the plug and receptacle. And secondly is a high speed transmission capability. So the so the connector can uh, move those signals at, in high speed. Uh, applications include a wide variety of, um, of industries, uh, including medical devices, office equipment, uh, industrial computer systems, automotive, automotive nav navigation, audio systems, uh, just a just a wide variety of, of products or, or markets that require a board to board interconnection. Um, here's a little picture of part of the Function Max family, so you get some idea of what we're looking at. Uh, Function Max connectors come in three configurations. On the top right, you'll see the uh, the most common is probably the vertical or mezzanine uh, type board to board, where the boards are parallel. Uh, connecting to one another. In the center left is a right angle application, uh, sometimes referred to as a riser card. And then bottom right is the coplanar application, which I'm sure you're quite familiar with. Now I'm going to show you a couple of pages from the new Function Max brochure or, or, or short catalog, which has just been published. Uh, I don't know if some of these may have come to your offices yet, but uh, just kind of want to walk you through a couple of pages of the catalog, and we'll go into more detail uh, when we get to a couple of specific connectors. Uh, so here's an overview showing you the floating features of the of the connector. Uh, the next page talks a little bit about the high speed capabilities, and the next two pages go through each specific product type. So, uh, so in this particular example that's on the screen now, uh, it would be page seven of the uh, catalog if you have any of them. Um, so, on the, for example, on the FX20 series, it shows it has the floating feature, the floating design. Uh, it has a dual contact design, which we'll talk about in a, in a minute or two. Uh, it's available in right angle or in parallel. Parallel. Uh, is a term that's used in this catalog. Sometimes you can think of it as a vertical board-to-board -board, uh, stacking type connector. Uh, FX22 you can be seen there. Uh, FX30B is seen there. Uh, one uh, feature of the FX30 uh, that you'll notice is it, is it has power and signal hybrid uh, capabilities. Um, so these are just, again, a couple of pages from the catalog I wanted to show you. Uh, here's the next page, uh, page 8. Uh, which shows FX23, FX18, FX8, and FX10. Um, later in the presentation today, we'll go into detail with on the FX20 and FX23, which are two of the newer series that Hiroshi is offering. Uh, this would be the next page of the catalog. Again, it's showing you a variety of features, so it shows you how many contacts uh, are available, uh, the pitch of the connector, uh, if it's right angle parallel or or, um, uh, or coplanar, uh, current rating, mounting types, and then some additional features. You can see I have uh, highlighted in that red box there uh, where we have floating feature or high speed transmission. So if you look at the chart, you'll see that the FX10 is both uh, has the floating feature and in, and is high speed. The FX20 has only the floating feature. If you move over to the right under FX8 and FX18, you'll see that they do not have the floating feature, but they do have high speed capabilities. So that's kind of, again, that's what puts them into the function max uh, product family or product grouping. Uh, the next page of the brochure has additional board to board connectors that are not 
uh, function max connectors. So you'll see that they do not have uh, many of the features that the function max uh, offers. But we wanted to just show you some additional board to board connectors that, uh, that are available from us. So let's get into uh, detail on two of the product lines. I said uh, we want to talk about FX20 and FX23. Uh, I'll have a chance to now show you a little more detail of how that floating feature works. So on the uh, Function Max FX20, uh, the first feature is that the uh, board to board connection floats uh, plus or minus 0.6 millimeters in both the X and Y direction. Uh, it has a dual blade uh, contact, which we'll see some uh, detail on later, which has a self-cleaning function, and it also offers uh, a high degree of vibration resistance with the double beam contact. The FX20 is uh, rated at uh, 0.5 amps per pin. Uh, comes in four different uh, stacking heights, uh, depending on how you mix and match the plug-in receptacle. Um, come in 15, 20, 25, and 30 millimeter uh, distances in the vertical uh, direction. And it's available from 20 to 140 pit, uh, positions or contacts. Uh, then there's also, as, as part of the 0.6 millimeter floating uh, capability, uh, there's a self-alignment uh, structure or feature uh, that al allows you to align the contacts uh, 1.2 millimeters, which, again, there'll be some more detailed pictures of that. And the contacts in both the header and the receptacle, receptacle are closed in a housing, so they're not open to air, open to general dust. Here's a, um, uh, a slide which demonstrates a little closer how that floating connector works. So on the left-hand side, you can see you've got two connectors mounted on one board. So if you're only mounting one connector on the board, on a, on a stacking board to board, uh, the floating feature doesn't give you that much uh, uh, flexibility. In other words, you don't really need it because you're just mating one connector with another. But when you've got two boards, uh, there could be some misalignment because the boards aren't mounted exactly in the right position on the board. So that allows you to put two connectors uh, next to one another on the board, and it absorbs some of that misalignment in the, uh, in the X direction, as you can see by the arrows pointing uh, uh, inward at one another. Um, it also offers a uh, ab absorbs uh, some shrinkage uh, caused by high temperature and PCBs and vibration resistance during the operation. That floating feature gives you some uh, uh, dimensional uh, uh, flexibility. So here's a little more detail. You can see in the um, in the upper left hand corner, there's a fixed base, and within the fixed base, there's an insert that floats in the Y direction and it floats in the X direction inside of the fixed base. What that does for you is it, it, it allows for that absorption without putting stress on the contacts, undue stress on the contacts. The next slide here shows you uh, dimensional stacking height variations. So you can see using the straight receptacle that is 8.3 millimeters tall or the 18.3 millimeter tall, and then using the header that can either be that either comes in a 13.2 millimeter height or an 18.2 millimeter height, you can see you can mix and match them to get anywhere from 15 to 30 millimeters board to board spacing. Again, comes in 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, and 140 position connectors. Uh, as we talked about, also available in a right angle mating uh, version. So in the FX20 is vertical or right angle mating. The next slide here shows a little more detail on that double beam contact. So if you can see here, the first beam that is dimensioned out at 2.5 millimeters, uh, as the connector is mated, that scrapes across the mating surface and cleans away the dust uh, so that the second contact that mates, uh, mates with a, a pre-cleaned surface. Uh, also, each one of these contact structures here has a different vibration characteristic. 
So as one contact in a certain vibration uh, profile, one contact might be uh, bouncing on the mating position. Uh, the other contact, having a different length beam, has a different vibration characteristic, so it will maintain contact. So it's very good in a high, high vibration uh, application. Uh, the, the contact is a uh, 0.5 amp current capability, current carrying capability. Um, the, having a, a higher amperage contact, the, the real advantage of that is if you have to carry some, uh, some degree of power, uh, you can spread that out between contacts. So as each contact is uh, a little bit higher than, than the competitive products, the overall requires fewer positions to, uh, to carry that. So in the example on the bottom here, uh, the FX20 being a 0.5 uh, millimeter pitch, uh, carrying 0.5 amps, uh, a competitive uh, 0.5 millimeter pitch product carries only 0.3 amps. So if you need to distribute it uh, 60 amps over the contacts, you need 120 positions on the FX20. On the competitive product, you need 200 positions to carry the same 60 amps because you, it'll own, each contact will only carry 0.3 amps. Hope that wasn't too confusing, but uh, the, again, the idea being that you need fewer contacts to distribute your power over. I want to switch a little bit to the FX23 series now. Uh, this is the second one we want to talk about today. Um, the FX23 has, uh, is, has the floating feature as we discussed. Uh, it has high speed capabilities and it has the capability to carry some power in power dedicated contacts. Again, it has the 0.6 millimeter floating capability in X and Y directions. Uh, it has a 1.2 millimeter self-aligning ability in blind mate applications. Uh, it has excellent mating alignment with large guide po posts. That's part of what helps that 1.2 uh, self-alignment ability happen. And then there are two power pins provided on each side of the connector uh, integrated into the self-aligning blind mate uh, 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 post. Uh, each one of those carrying uh, three amps per pin. It has high-speed transmission capabilities of six gigabits per second, uh, and is rated, the signal uh, terminals are rated up to 0.5 amps per pin. Comes in two vertical spacing heights of 15 and 30 millimeters. So the next slide shows you uh, both the vertical and right angle configurations that it's capable of. Again, in availability in positions 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 120 positions. I think you've seen this slide before when we were talking about the FX20. Uh, so it's got a fixed base and the floating insert um, uh, gives you that 0.6 millimeter um, uh, alignment uh, flexibility in both the X and Y dimensions. The next slide here shows you uh, part of the reason why that floating capability is so important. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see a stress analysis that we've done on the contact, on, on the each individual contact that would be inside of there. So I don't know if you can see the colors. They're, they're not very vibrant, but uh, the blue color shows you that there's no stress. Yellow is a little bit of stress. Red is a higher stress. Uh, and you can see when uh, we've exercised the connector in the 0.6 millimeter uh, misalignment uh, uh, status. Uh, both of the solder terminals are blue in color, showing that there's no stress on them uh, because of the misalignment. So what that does is that ensures that you have a good solder joint on the printed circuit board, uh, uh, even with some misalignment of the connector. So it really isolates the, uh, isolates the stress on the surface mount tails uh, to give you a longer life. The next slide here talks a little bit about the high-speed transmission capability of the FX23. 
Uh, you can see that there is a, uh, a pattern of a ground, signal, signal, ground, signal, signal, ground. So you've got the differential pairs, the two signal contacts, isolated by a ground on either side. So that's what's giving you the, uh, the, the high-speed capability, uh, reduced crosstalk, and controlled impedance. Here's another slide which, which uh, demonstrates the uh, testing that we've done showing excellence impedance uh, with, a, uh, with, a, with a very clear eye, eye pattern or an eye diagram, uh, even run over a couple of different uh, pulse uh, rates. Again, uh, with those blue and orange, or whatever color they are, blue and yellow dots, uh, it just kind of shows you the pattern of a ground uh, and then a differential pair isolated by another ground. Another, uh, and they're also isolated vertically because you've, um, uh, you've integrated those ground pins with the signal pins. The next slide shows you the built-in power contacts. Uh, they're built into the um, uh, end of the connector, so there's one on either side of the connector and uh, in the X direction and one on either side in the Y direction. So basically you get four uh, power contacts that handle three amps apiece. And they're built into the guide posts, which, uh, which again, that guide post is part of that aligning feature, which makes that alignment happen. So you have... Um, so you've basically got 12 amps of capability for power within those guideposts. Uh, the connector is also designed with a uh, with a small standoff, which pulls the the housing away from the contacts, uh, so that you can um, uh, use a conformal coating agent on the contacts if uh, if the customer needs that. Uh, as the contact goes vertically, uh, it also makes a horizontal uh, a feature to it so that it, it says there, um, if you can read it, it says mid-air shutoff of coating agent. Basically, that feature stops the coating agent from wicking into the contact area. And uh, the next slide shows you the height capabilities, again, mixing and matching the uh, the plug-in receptacle variations uh, one to another. You can have four different heights av available, 15, 20, 25, and 30 millimeters. And that's what I've got for you this morning. So I think we've uh, we finished up the presentation in about 20 minutes. I'd like to open it up for any questions if you might have them.